Hello everyone and welcome to the latest episode of Sug Talks. I'm Craig Dale, your host, and together with our special guests, we'll take a deep dive into the topics, challenges and opportunities facing SAP users today. Please make sure you hit that subscribe button so you never miss another episode. Today, it's an absolute pleasure for me to welcome back to the pod Dr. Uwe Grigolai, Senior Vice President of the Customer Evolution Programme at SAP. Now, our regular listeners may remember our conversation a year ago now. Where, God, where does the time go? And when we discussed the SAP Customer Evolution Programme. So, welcome back, Uwe. Thanks, Greg. Thanks for having me again. I'm really uh, pleased to be in this podcast again. Ah, it's an absolute pleasure. And in today's episode, we're going to be discussing SAP's newly launched Rise with SAP Migration and Modernization Program, which is intended to facilitate SAP customers' move to the cloud. But before we get into that, and just to start things off, I'd like to ask you, Uber, what's your favorite genre of music? And whilst you just have a little think about that, in my youth, I, I loved ska, but as I've grown older, I think I would have to put my sticker down on soul. I just think I like the way it can move from relaxing with the likes of Marvin Gaye, Al Green, to almost disco with the Temptations or Eat the Frank Lexham. So I'm going to go with soul. What's your favorite genre? <laughs> um, it, it's it's a very good question. I'm I'm uh, I mean as as you went through different phases as well. I also went through different phases. I mean when I was uh, was a young guy, I was uh, listening to heavy metal, right? So maybe as uh, many of the young people are doing, and even today I'm I have a, a, a quite a broad spectrum. I'm I really like classical music. I'm uh, listening uh, a lot into classical music, especially. Uh, uh, piano music. So Igor Levit is one of my famous artists here. Um, uh, and uh, But I also like uh, a more jazz style of, uh, um, especially also again, piano music. So Tingwald Trio is, uh, uh, is, is uh, one of my favorites here. So really a broad spectrum. Um, and uh, I had my, my, my godchild was with me over the weekend in, in, uh, in Switzerland for skiing. And uh, we were listening the whole weekend to rap, right? Because he's 17, uh, living in Brussels, and uh, he, he likes to listen into rap music. So we were he, uh, listening into Catalan rap, French rap, uh, whatever type of rap uh, that was available there as well. And I have to say, some of the songs were also quite interesting. Not that I would hear it every day, but interesting. <laughs> oh, wow. I well, if you break into any kind of rap or rhyming slang in any of the answers today, we'll understand completely why. <laughs> and it should make it really interesting to talk about this SAP modernization <laughs> and migration program in that way. <laughs> yeah, I will, I will see. Oh, well, thank you. And, you know, the last time we, we did speak, uh, Series 10, Episode 3 of Sub Talks, if anyone is interested, we discussed the SAP Customer Evolution Programme and, and how it helps and supports customers with the future plans and requirements and how SAP can support their transformation. And just last week, uh, I think in alignment with this, from a cloud perspective perhaps, yeah. SAP launched the Rise Migration and Modernization Program. So would you be able to give us an overview of, of what it is and, and how it will benefit customers, Uber? Yeah, yes, of course. Happy, happy to do that. And uh, you exactly um, introduced it very well already, um, because what we have launched now is the Rise Migration and Modernization Program is definitely... Um, uh, to some extent as well, the outcome of the customer evolution program that we have set up, uh, aiming to help our customers moving to SAP's latest applications. Of course, with uh, the move from the classical ECC to the um, to cloud ERP to S4HANA at the center, but also um, covering all of the other solutions around, be it CRM, SRM, uh, the uh, old um, um, uh, the, the old Internet Viva portfolio, um, but. With the RISE Migration and Modernization Program, I mean, as the name says, of course, this is a program that now specifically targets the topic of customers moving to RISE, moving to our cloud ERP solution. And um, what we collected in this program, and we will most likely 
deep dive into some areas then a lot more. What we collected in these programs is a set of incentives, services and dedicated um, offerings from our side and then also combined with partner offerings with which we would like to help really our customers to move to the cloud because we understand that moving to the cloud is a transformation for our customers uh, and especially in the RISE context that transformation moving to the cloud comes in combination with, for most of the customers, um, the transformation moving from a classical ECC to an S4 or from an early S4 adopted release then um, to a to the latest S4 release then leveraging also a lot of the innovations that we have put into that solution. So um, this is why that combination of a transformation on the IT side, moving to the cloud and the combination on the business side, moving to new business processes, changing business processes. Uh, um, this is something where we uh, um, identified at SAP. There is some more we can do and we should do to really support our customers on the journey. And uh, when we launched RISE a few years back, I mean, we were always talking about the transformation as a service, which uh, is still our um, uh, utmost goal, so to say, we are reaching out for. Um, and the RISE modernization and uh, migration program should be another step towards that. And we hope uh, that when we are now uh, coming to some details, we will see that with the offerings we are including there, it is really it is really the idea a lot more, so to say, taking the customers by the hand and leading them into this new area. Oh, thank you. And, you know, from, from that, uh, in introduction, what what do you think, or I suppose lo looking back at the creation of, of the program, uh, what, what are the, the, the top reasons really for creating the RISE Migration Modernization Program from an SAP perspective? Yeah. Um I mean, we've been we've been driven by um, I would say by basically two larger so to say groups of customers that were triggering us uh, building that program, and um, the first group is the early adopters. Uh, I mean, we launched S4 HANA back in 2015, and luckily, and uh, we we have we uh, have a, had and have a lot of customers that followed us on that journey very 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 early. Right, so S4 HANA. Um, we can definitely say is, is a success story for SAP. We have ma many of our existing customers that uh, moved to that solution already, at least with one, really, one, one of their systems. Sometimes um, some systems are remaining on the old uh, ECC release still. Um, and uh, of course, new customers right from uh, 2015 onward directly going uh, to, to S4. And so all of these customers are on are on S4 now, and of course now they are also looking into what is uh, really the next step, especially what is the next step, and uh, if they are then uh, having interest to move to the cloud, because especially when we look back in 2015, 16, 17, of course the vast majority of the customers have been moving to on-premise because that was the solution at that point in time. So this is why the first um, group we have been um, uh, looking at uh, that was triggering also that specific program is that we said, look. I mean, there are now so many customers out there um, that are using s on-premise already. And when we are now coming out and saying we are seeing um, the future of ERP in the cloud because of the advantages of consuming ERP services out of the cloud, um, we said we need to do something to um, yeah, help especially these early adopters because, so to say, they are our best friends right? because they went, went very early. Um, the second group is, I wouldn't say the, the opposite, but to some extent you, you can say it in, the, in that direction. Um, we, of course, still have also um, quite a number of customers, um, especially very small customers that um, are still on ECC. Uh, even so, that number is going down every year. Um, it, it, is still, it is still a number of systems to, um, to convert. And we are looking at ECC, the timelines, uh, some, some releases, uh, enhancing packages of ECC running out in 2025 already, others then in 2027 with maximum 2030x extended maintenance. Um, we said um, that is the second group uh, where we really have to now um, uh, um, support them to manage everything in time. Because I, I think we all know we had challenges over the past uh, uh, years. Um, challenges uh, because of the pandemic, challenges because of uh, worldwide crisis uh, and, and wars coming up closer than we ever have meant uh, to be. 
And um, so this is why um, we are saying there are so many disruptions uh, and this is why time might uh, get short. So that was that is the second uh, big group of customers and that's the second big reason um, why we said, look, I mean, we have to improve really our, our offerings, moving customers to the latest innovations um, because yeah, time is running out and uh, uh, with just, so to say, looking at it and watching it, it, it's not enough. So this is why we said we have to really bring something into the equation. Uh, thank you. And so from the uh, press release, I think it was, there was, there was two main primary issues businesses were facing, I think was mentioned. Uh, one was scope and one was cost. And I'll, I'll come back to cost soon, but from a scope perspective, how, how does the program help businesses with, with their scope when moving to the cloud? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, um, when we so scope for me is also always uh, um, related to complexity, right? Because uh, I mean, we all know EC, uh, ERP processes are handled in the ECC today, um, and this is not only the core of the business of our customers, but it's also in many cases quite complex uh, processes we are talking about. And um, <clears throat> that processes combined with the full landscape we are looking at is of course um, uh, delivering uh, quite a lot of complexity, and this is why. Um, what we um, launched now with the RISE migration and um, modernization program is, for instance, the RISE methodology. And what the RISE methodology now does, it is, it is, it is combining uh, our Activate methodology with what we have also developed already as the RISE adoption framework. And those two things together are now giving our customers a very structured uh, um, uh, working book, a very structured guideline. Um, along which they can really drive their move to S4HANA, right? And our, our idea is, of course, that with this um, very uh, um, solid methodology on which we are also certifying our partners now, we will, uh, um, uh, we will achieve shorter um, project, um, lifetime, project lifetimes, project times, and with that faster adoption um, of, of the next generation application, right? So that, that is really um, how we would like to help our customers there. And we are combining this with, uh, uh, with an also clean core um, initiatives that we, are, that we are driving here, because we have also seen when we are now looking into the past, the years, uh, what has really been driving complexity and with that also time and cost in the projects. Then of course uh, it is uh, custom code, it is complexity in the uh, in the programming, uh, also in the processes that have been defined in the system, and this is why um, also our clean core initiative, and then what our methodology is adding to the clean core, that is of course also what is uh, what is helping the customers, um, and this is why um, when we are looking also again at the program a little bit. One element we are, we are providing customers along with that program is, for instance, an enterprise architect. Right? We are saying that for a, yeah, let's say, substantial RISE uh, implementation, so when I'm not only doing 10 users in RISE, but if I'm doing really a substantial RISE implementation, then I'm getting from SAP also a dedicated enterprise architect capacity. And um, that architect, of course, should help our customers really to come back with the best uh, um, cloud-optimized architecture, um, to really set up also the connecting systems in the best way so that, again, all of these things are helping the customer to um, reduce the, uh, the implementation time of the projects. Uh, thank you for that. And, you know, what, one of the things you, you, you covered there, if I can just focus on that for just a, a, a small moment, is kind of eliminated custom code. And if you like SAP's... Uh, mantra, if, if you like, for want of a better word, around a clean core. Mm -hmm. Just for, for, for anybody who, who perhaps doesn't understand that, what does SAP mean by a clean core? Um, th th it's good that you're that you're doubling down on that topic because I mean with clean core we are we are really having the idea of a of a system that is um, following uh, fundamentally the standards that we are delivering. And the important thing is that for us clean core is more than, so to say, just a system without modifications. That is, of course, the basis, right, or with as least modifications as possible. Um, that is, of course, the basis. But for us, clean core goes, goes above and beyond. Because once I've cleaned up the system from uh, um, code elements that are modifying SAP standard core, 
Of course, by the way, I can still, of course, have my tailored processes now, but just programmed in a com in a compliant way. Um, I should then look also at things like the integrations, right? Because I can have a very clean core without any modification, but I'm doing um, the integration with other systems using, for instance, old IDOC technology, right? So um, whereas uh, with our um, cloud uh, platform integration uh, um, uh, solution and the event-based uh, integration concepts that we're having there, I can now integrate systems a lot in a lot more modern and a lot more and better controllable way. So that's why integration is the second element using our standard uh, APIs, but also uh, new technologies. Then also from a um, from a process perspective, I mean, of course, a clean system, a clean core should also follow as much as possible our standard processes, right? And uh, that, of course, will help our customers, so to say, even in a private cloud environment, in a public cloud, you are forced to um, to follow the standard. But even in a private cloud, if you're following the standard, of course, you can streamline the implementation project um, quite heavily. But, and um, then, then, of course, the, um, uh, we are also looking at other elements in, in the clean core. Um, so um, also in the way how um, how the, the user interface is being used, right? So, I mean, we have invested quite a lot of time, effort, money from an SAP side to really uh, modernize our, our user interface, to really um, bring out processes with Fiori in a, in a completely new way, also supported by AI. But of course, we also have to make sure that these things are used, right? And if I'm still using um, the old uh, um, classical ABAP transactions, um, I shouldn't be surprised that S4 really looks like the old system still, right? So then, so and this shows that clean core is really going uh, across all of the dimensions of the of the IT system um, to really ensure that uh, um, our best practices are being adopted. Ah, uh, thank you very much. We know our community, but we don't know yours yet. Why not share the benefits of your UKI sub membership with those who don't know about us? The UKI sub referral scheme rewards you for helping to grow and develop our community. You can check out the link in the description to find out more about how you can get involved. Terms and conditions apply. We hope you enjoy the rest of the podcast. And just going back to uh, just something I touched on a, a few small moments ago, which is possibly a very important aspect, and that's the financial <laughs> incentives for customers. <laughs> Could you talk a little bit more around those financial incentives that are available uh, to customers and, and how the credit system works for them? Yeah. Please, Uber? No, ha happy to do that. And uh, I mean, uh, when, I, when I'm reading the, the newspapers, I mean, some, some, some articles were saying, ah, oh, SAP is now... Uh, um, so uh, give, giving giving money to the customers just that they follow follow the strategy, right? So it's always interesting what happens if you are if you're doing benefits like that. But the idea behind these credits is the following. I mean, we, we all know, as I said at the beginning, I mean, the move to to rise, the move to the cloud ERP, next generation ERP, is a transformation for our customers. Transformation are creating costs. And of course, uh, I mean, uh, we are interested to, um, of, of course, make that move as attractive and digestible, especially as possible for our customers. And this is why we said uh, um, we, we should also combine um, uh, that move now with some commercial benefits. So this is why um, there is this credit program uh, being released where we, um, where customers uh, will get a credit of up to 50% of the migration costs. Uh, um, the, the concrete uh, percentage, of course, is always a question of how big the rise investment is compared to the complexity of the project. And um, these credits that we are giving to the customers can be used for services uh, um, that are that the customer would like to consume from SAP on top of the enterprise architect they're getting anyhow as part of the RICE agreement. Um, they can be consumed for um, uh, getting a maintenance credit because we are, of course, seeing especially customers coming from the on-premise world. Um, while moving to the cloud, they have a time uh, where they still meet, need the on-premise systems with that uh, are paying maintenance for the on-premise systems uh, in parallel. They are starting to pay um, at least some subscriptions already for the cloud systems. And this perceived double payment is, of course, adding to the cost of the transformation. So that's why um, also a, a maintenance credit is another um, uh, possible way how to use that um, um, that incentive that we are um, launching there. 
And last but not least, I mean, um, of course, if customers are saying, I'm not only investing into cloud VIP, I'm also looking into other SAP cloud solutions, success vectors, um, the Conquer portfolio, then um, of course, uh, the credit can also be used against these, uh, these solutions. Um, so that's, that's, that's how um, I think also for the benefit of the project of the customer, also for speed of the project, um, um, this benefit, uh, this uh, incentive can be used. And um, the idea is really, um, especially, and this is why also the, um, uh, the highest benefit is allo allocated there, especially customers that are on S4 on premise already, right? Because as I said at the beginning, these are the customers that followed us early on our strategy. And of course, we wanted to yeah, give them something back. And that's why especially those customers will get even a little bit higher um, uh, incentive here than the customers that are, that are on ECC today already, because they invested over the past years already into SAP, into the modernization. And that is what we would like to um, yeah, compensate, so to say, at least to some extent. So you've got two separate focuses there from those two kind of key customer groups, the customers who have followed you, uh, early adopters of, uh, on S4 on-prem currently. Mm -hmm. So they get the, the, the higher rate, rate of credits and then customers who are thinking about their journey to S4 who perhaps mm -hmm. haven't yet embarked on that journey and they're also uh, able to access credits to help them on their move if they choose Rise with SAP. Exactly, yeah. Okay, thank you for that. And also part of the announcement was uh, the S4 HANA Cloud Safekeeper service. Mm -hmm. uh, could you explain to our listeners a little bit more about that and how that will work? Yeah, happy to. Interesting name again, right? Safekeeper. So what <laughs> what keeps it safe, so to say? Um, and th this comes back again to our early adapters. Um, the, the early adapters um, that were moving to, um, to the early releases of S4, be it... Uh, um, then um, 1709, 1809, um, or even the very first simple finance releases, uh, 1605 and uh, 1503 that are still um, uh, un under maintenance. Um, I mean, we have a lot of customers that are on these releases and um, most of these releases, basically all I've been just mentioning, are ending with either extended or mainstream maintenance by the end of 2025. So when we have been looking into that, we said, hmm, okay, there is a... Um, there's a point in time now, end of 2025, where really many of these early customers need to do an upgrade, right? And uh, of course, uh, we were, we, we are afraid, we were afraid that uh, um, capacity shortages that are already occurring today, uh, complexities of external environments will make it difficult for all of these customers to really do these upgrades in time, right? And uh, um, of course, maintenance does not end um, after, 31st of December 2025, for all of these releases, there is uh, customer-specific maintenance. But of course, that comes with uh, degradations of the uh, of the maintenance uh, we are we, we are providing. We can provide, and that's why, of course, uh, many customers don't want with their core system be in customer-specific maintenance. So um, the idea we had with the Safekeeper service uh, is that we said. Um, if the customers are in our cloud, right, uh, then and we are managing the system, we had the idea and uh, came up with a, with, a, with a way how we can mitigate this, right? Because if the system is operated by us, we can, of course, uh, I mean, of course, the system still remains in customer-specific maintenance, but as we are operating the system, we can deliver a specific level of business continuity even longer than uh, um, uh, than than in the in the on-premise world, right? So, um, and that's why in the Safekeeper service, which is available for customers that are um, with one of these releases uh, under Rise, um, in the Safekeeper service, we can offer these customers uh, 27 months uh, um, additional time, and during that time, we are ensuring business continuity with maintenance-related services. Um, so even so, the system, the, the system release as such is in customer-specific maintenance still. Um, we will uh, make sure security patches, legal uh, patches, and also bug fixing will be applied to these systems. In addition, we are actively supporting the customer with the upgrade. Because the reason that the customer is still on that old release is that they didn't manage, due to whatever reasons, um, the upgrade. So this is why part of the Safekeeper services as well, that um, we are actively supporting the customer with the upgrade, including also a, land, a sandbox landscape that is set up in our cloud. 
Um, it's a paid service because we are actively supporting the customer. They're, they're giving, uh, they're getting a sandbox environment, and they're getting these uh, additional business continuity services um, for this um, uh, 27 additional months. But um, <clears throat> uh, it is, of course, on the other hand, a very attractive service, at least in my view, um, because it is really uh, um, making sure that we are not having this accumulation of uh, of releases that are um, that are. Um, uh, valid for an upgrade here, um, end of 2025. Um, and again, as I said, I mean, I think it's it's again showing um, what is possible also from a uh, from the perspective of a software provider if we are um, uh, if we are having the pleasure, so to say, to operate the system for the customer and they are not doing it on their own because this is also the reason why we are able to offer this specific safekeeper service in this context. Uh, thank you. So if just just kind of. Clarifying, if I may, so the the safekeepers for the the early adopters who have uh, already moved to <clears throat> an early version of S4 HANA, who are on prem, who are committing to move to Rise, but don't have the time to do it before kind of custom maintenance comes in. This is who uh, the safekeeper service is designed for. Yeah. With one addition, one small, so to say, uh, um, uh, pointed, the customer needs to be in the on the uh, on rise uh, um, prior to the end of 2025, right? Because um, as as of the first of January 2026, so to say, um, that system has to be in our latest. Uh, um, that uh, system has to be in our cloud so that we can offer that service. So that's uh, but exactly. I mean, because today they can still be in on premise. Um, and um, then they will move to RISE, and then uh, under RISE, they're getting this 27 additional months. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. It's so there's quite a lot happening. Uh, SAP is giving quite a lot of things uh, to customers to help them on the journey. Yeah. Not wanting to be greedy, but <laughs> are there any further plans to, to provide <laughs> further support for customers in the future? Um, I mean, as, as, as we are seeing also, I mean, when we are uh, relating back to our conversation one year ago, uh, um, as you're seeing, I mean, we are constantly yeah. investigating uh, what is really keeping up customers, right? And uh, mm -hmm. I mean, when I, I was driving a larger program in the customer evolution um, team, uh, reaching out to um, not every, but as many as we could get uh, customers last year that are on one of the older ECC releases that are running out in 2025. Um, so we uh, touched, I think, basically a little bit more than 50 or 60 percent of the of these systems worldwide, uh, reaching out to all of these customers, no matter whether direct or indirect customers, asking them to um, uh, why they are on this old release and understanding their challenges. And um, that, of course, also led to some of these elements that we are seeing here because we have really uh, seen, okay, these are the, the problems, so to say, our customers are facing. Um, so that, of course, we will continue. And if we find out that some of the ideas that we are having, right, the enterprise architect, the RISE methodology, the safekeeper program, the incentive, if we are seeing that some of these things are uh, jumping too short, so to say, um, then, um, of course, we will also start to investigate, is there something we can we can do more? I mean, uh, it is quite obvious when we cannot uh, pay whole projects for, for our customers. That's also not something that is uh, that is manageable for a company like us. But but of course, uh, we, we will see, especially in the collaboration with our partners, there might be some additional tweaks uh, we can give to that program or additions we can we can put into that um, that are making it even more attractive. And then we will uh, we will investigate that over the time. But um, I, I think uh, when we are seeing, we are talking now already quite nearly nearly 30 minutes around that. So there is already quite a lot in in, in the program now. Mm -hmm. And um, so this is why I'm, I'm confident we are getting quite far with it. But as I, as I said, uh, once if we are seeing there is something fundamentally missing, we will, of course, add to that as well. Oh, thank you. And I, I applaud that flexibility. And, you know, when, when we're looking at this, you know, it, it's, it's definitely very positive for customers, I think, who were, who were looking to make that move or thinking about it or feel that, OK, I, I've gone so far with, with S4 on-prem. I'm stuck now. Where do I go? It's certainly given options and given support for customers. So I think, you mm -hmm. know, we, we, we certainly all behind that and, and think it's a, a very good offering in that way. Uh, just just going back on that, you know, the, the, the ability to help those two 
if, if you like, groups of customers access the innovations mm -hmm. moving forward and bring them onto the latest releases. And, you know, just to touch on, I suppose, the, that third group of customers as well, who perhaps may find it very difficult to move to the cloud in, mm -hmm. in the coming years, be it the complexity of their business, their systems, but would still like to access some of those strategic cloud innovations. Is is there perhaps likely to be any future support for those customers to, to access innovations with, mm -hmm. without them having to make that move to the cloud if they're unable to? Yeah, um, I mean, this is a very good question and also a question that we are, we are hearing many times. And um, I mean, and, and the answer is yes, definitely. That also customers that are um, um, still uh, running in S4 on-premise and will continue to do that over the next years, they will receive innovations. They, they have received innovations, um, for instance, with the 2023 release of S4 that came out last year. Um, uh, I'm always uh, I'm happy to say that the, um, the list of innovations is a more than 100 pages document, right? And this is, I mean, all of these things uh, these customers got. And um, so there is innovation in S4, even in AI, right? Uh, and yep. I'm also always happy to point out that, I mean, when, when, I when we released S4 HANA, the 2019 release, uh, 1909 release in 2019, um, that release already had over 200 AI scenarios. In the meantime, we are in S4 um, and available for all customers, even the on-premise customers at more than 300 AI scenarios, right? So um, there is a lot to consume also in the AI context. And um, what we are saying on the other hand, there are some uh, innovations like uh, generative AI um, uh, usage, like um, also the Green Ledger, that we are um, not only building in the cloud as a, from, from a technology perspective, but also only for customers in the cloud, because that will allow us to be faster with that innovations. That will also allow us to, um, um, to build innovations that are really meaningful, because especially when we're talking about Gen AI, right? I mean, it lives from us, so to say, using the data of the customers and uh, uh, with that optimizing the models. And that's, on the other hand, something you're only getting in the cloud, right? So that's why there are some things that, um, I mean, if we, whether we like it or not, there are some things that only work in the cloud, right? And so that's why um, um, the, we have also communicated that these are topics we are only delivering in the cloud. Some topics where technically it would be possible to um, make it available outside as well. Um, uh, we, are, we are saying, um, look, I mean, if we are doing it for the cloud, then we can be a lot faster, right? And uh, I mean, when we are looking at the speed um, with which not only we, but also uh, Microsoft, uh, um, all of the other uh, players out there are now starting to deliver um, uh, new scenarios, we sometimes also have to uh, take a decision as a company um, on that strategic level where we are saying, I mean, we uh, have to balance between serving everybody and being fast. And for some innovations, we also, of course, need to then give a priority to, of be, uh, to be fast, because if you're not fast in our business, you are last. <laughs> and and that yeah. is uh, that is really a binary decision, unfortunately, and um, so that's why uh, um, yeah we have we have taken the decision for some things we really need to be fast. So that's why we are doing it for cloud only. That simplifies our processes and our um, uh, development speed substantially. Um, and uh, but as I said, uh, it's it's not it's it does not mean that uh, I'm not getting anything if I'm on premise. Uh, um, also, the next release of S4 in 2025 will have a big roadmap also for every customer. Um, so uh, it is really selective topics that we are um, only delivering for cloud customers. Okay, thank you very much for that, Uwe. I really appreciate you touching on that for us. And, you know, that so many of the uh, the, the benefits you've talked about, uh, uh, it hopefully helps customers on their journey and, and make some informed decisions as they move forward with SAP. And as, as we come to a close, uh, I suppose the main question people might be asking themselves is, where, where can customers go to find out more uh, regarding the rise with SAP migration and modernization program? Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, and, and that is quite straightforward. So on, on sap.com, on our public web pages, if you're moving to, to, the, to the rise pages, you will directly 
Um, basically, at the title, you will find a link to the RISE uh, Migration and Modernization Program. And uh, um, clicking on that link, um, there is uh, quite an extensive description of everything we have been talking about. There's also the possibility to register for a um, direct engagement uh, that is following our customer evolution kit methodology. Um, uh, that we have launched as customer evolution program last year already, um, and we uh, we are now also making that part of the um, modernization and migration program. Um, so customers, every customer can register there for free, and they are getting then a, um, a, a structured enablement and a structured uh, engagement format where we are helping the customer, no matter where they are today, on ECC, on S4, on any mixture, um, uh, we are helping them to um, to guide their journey to the uh, to Cloud ERP, to the latest um, SAP innovations. And uh, um, that we are also, um, we will also work on that in the future to make, make it also a lot more digital um, so that really customers can register, get also AI based um, uh, suggestions for their, for their move. Um, so um, also here, AI, I think will, will help us, will help um, uh, our customers uh, to make that uh, transformation better and faster. And um, that is what uh, uh, customers will find uh, just on sub.com rise and uh, clicking on modernization and migration program. Thank you very much. Well, we'll include a link uh, with the notes to, to this episode uh, so uh, customers can find that. And just before we do close, is there anything perhaps we haven't covered or anything you would like to add to anything, anything that we've missed? No, I think from, from my side, we, we covered the program really um, very nicely. Um, and again, I mean, the, the idea is uh, uh, what we can take away from our customers is um, any possible technical uh, um, uh, technical hurdle uh, moving to, uh, to S4 and to cloud ERP. Um, as I said, we also start, started now to with the, with the incentive to take away at least part of the cost as well. Um, um, what we, of course, uh, can only to a limited extent help the customer directly with is the business transformation. So that is, uh, that is definitely something that I would, uh, I would really encourage every customer. Think about your business, think about where to really innovate and, uh, and, and focus on that. Um, we are also running a lot of um, enablement workshops and support elements for the transformation. But at the end, at the end, that is the main topic in this whole uh, context that we are talking about here, um, where it really comes to each and every one outside there um, to to think about their own business, also to to think what what is it that I can maybe do a little bit more standardized and different than today. And uh, um, so that's really uh, what I also would like, on the other hand, to encourage each and every one of uh, the people listening um, uh, to, to look at, to do. And, uh, and then, of course, we are happy to support with everything that we can deliver as technology company. Thank you. Thank you very much, Juve. You know, thank you for your time. Thank you for your insights. And I look forward to our next discussion when we're looking at the next iteration of how <laughs> SAP is helping customers evolve. I, I really do look forward to that. So thank you very much. And yeah. thank you for listening. Uh, we hope you've enjoyed the conversation and found it valuable. Please make sure you do hit that subscribe button so you never miss any of our future episodes. And until the next time, stay safe, stay well, and keep smiling. Thank you.